Hello and welcome to episode one of Character Spotlight, where we take a closer look at different members of the Chrono series' amazing cast. In this episode, we're going to be talking about Janus. And not that Janus. There is plenty of time for that in another video. I'm talking about this Janus. Or Janus. Or Janus. I'm not sure of the actual pronunciation, but I've always said Janus. Kind of rhymes with anus, which is surprisingly appropriate. Born the second child of Queen Zeal, Janus is the embodiment of the pompous, spoiled rich kid we all pretty much despise. He's pretty subdued for a kid and doesn't talk much, and even the inhabitants of Zeal seem to think he's a little strange. We first meet him in Inhasia. As soon as he spots the party, he babbles a bit, and then delivers one of the most memorable lines in the game stating that someone on your team is soon to die. Really? Just like that? No, hey, how you doing? Or, welcome to Zeal, my name's Janus. Nope. <laughs> no wonder he hasn't got any friends outside of his cat and his sister with icebreakers like that. He'd probably scare the living shit out of any kid that tried to play with him. Now, I can't be too hard on Janus. To be fair, he has had a hard life for a prince. His father is dead. By the way, Janus and Shala aren't step-siblings. That's a translation error thanks to good old Ted Woolsey, the same guy who's responsible for Frog's old English accent, so... yeah. Anyway, his father's dead, his mother is mad with power, his sister is being forced into amplifying an evil machine, and to top it all off, the Black Wind, some sort of ominous power that allows him to see the future, doesn't give him a moment of peace. He also defends the party. From himself. Sort of. But let's be real. If Shala wasn't involved, he probably would have just turned his nose up and scoffed while the Prophet executed you. Seriously, he's obsessed with his sister to the point of annoyance. Shala's a saint for putting up with it. Not gonna lie, I actually laughed the first time Dalton smacked the piss out of him in the Earthbound Village. Finally somebody put that little snot in his place. Alright, alright, so he's not that bad of a kid. I mean, he did manage to make it through the Ocean Palace on his own, so he must have some kind of magic ability. It's even hinted that Melchior knows Janus is more powerful than Shala, so it's no surprise he had little to no trouble dispatching the creatures on the way to the Mammoth Machine. That would have been such a cool scene to watch, too. This little bastard just dark bombing and black holing his way to the bottom of the Ocean Palace. Regardless, we know he gets sucked into a time portal and flung to the Middle Ages during the disaster, as Magus reveals to us in one of the coolest twists in the game. Fat lot of good that amulet did him, huh? But what if that had never happened? Obviously, it occurred in both the timeline of the game and the original timeline before Chrono and the gang showed up in Zeal, but what would Janus's life have been like if Lavos never obliterated the kingdom, and he grew up there instead of becoming the King of the Mystics in the Middle Ages? Imagine those awkward teenage years, huddled up in a corner, babbling about the Black Wind with Coldplay on repeat in the background. I don't even think his cat would have stuck around for that. We're on a first date, just casually saying, Oh, by the way, here's the exact date and time of your death. Make arrangements. Luckily, that's not the case. And we got the badass, scythe-wielding, master of the dark arts with an army of undead shit that we know and love. So maybe the event that Magus marks as the worst moment of his life was actually the best thing that could have happened to him. Just didn't go too well for Cyrus. Or Glenn. Or Guardian. Also, Alvador still his only friend. 